Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I have a really fun card to share with you. I made a Mother's Day slider card and I colored this with my Copic markers and I will go through how the card was put together at the end. I'm using some E colors for the dog itself, E51, E55, E57, E59 and RV42 for the paws and a little bit of the nose. And generally I start from light to dark and then back out to light. With this dog, um, I just kind of kept going until I was happy with it. This stamp, I looked today to try and find it so I could link it for you. I believe that I got this as a free digital stamp from Pinterest, but I could not find it. I searched quite a while today hoping that I could link you to it. It may have been a stamp that I purchased a long time ago. I do know that I've had it in my stamp or excuse me my stash for a very long time. So I started with E51 and now I'm using E55 I believe and I'm going over the entire dog giving it a base coat. This dog is so cute. As you can see the outline of it is not very dark so I do go over it quite a few times till I was happy with it I'm putting in little fur strokes um, kind of going outside the lines a little bit to make him look a little bit furry and just going with my darker color um, I will also go back in with my lighter color and blend it out and like I said with this one I just kept going back and forth until I was really happy with how it turned out so I'm trying to leave him some highlights and um, darker spots over his nose. I'm making it a little bit darker, making it appear like it's sticking out a little bit more. And now here I'm stippling. I'm basically adding dots all over, which will look funny at first, but I will go ahead and blend that out. It does give this little guy some dimension in the end. So I'm going to do that all over with my darker color, and then I will go back with a lighter color and blend it all and again I just keep doing this until I'm happy with it using my E55 to blend that all out it does get rid of some of it so I'll go back and add a little bit more And here's the E59. This is going to be my darkest. I'm just going to add that in any spots that were shaded and go around, like I said earlier, in his ears to kind of make it, him look furry. Just adding some stroke lines there. And I'm purposely going outside of the lines, just trying to give it some dimension, coloring him where it would be darkest. And at the end, I also go over it with a pen to kind of put in some of those lines because it is such a faint outline. I do lose some of that when, while I was coloring it. So at the very end, I go back and add back in some of those black lines with a micron pen. Again, blending it back out. I've come to learn you just kind of want to keep messing with your images until you're happy with them and if that means you know you go back in to blend it but it takes out some of your your contrasting colors you can just go back and add them in here's here I'm adding a little bit more of the stippling again trying to make it look more like fur giving it some dimension the happy mother's day is just did not come with that stamp I added that on the bottom before I printed it out and I felt like my marker was a little bit too wet a little bit too juicy so I took off the cap on the other end as well I was worried I was going to get a big blob coming out so that just kind of equalizes it and and um, you, that ensures that it won't make a big mess on it again going back in adding the dark color the darkest color 
and then blending that out again. I went outside the line there, so I'm just using my colorless blender, and now I'm using the RV42, I believe it is, for his paws and a little bit in the middle of his nose. Here I'm pulling out my cool grays, C1, C3, C5, and C7. I also showed you their C9. I end up not using C9. So I used a little bit of C1. I'm going back with some C3 and then I'll blend that back out with the C1, giving him a little shadow underneath. And then that's going to be for the base color of his nose. And I go a little bit darker. Now I'm adding the darkest, the C7. I'm going to leave a highlight right in the center of his nose. And then this is the C5. And then I blend that back out with the C3. I'm also going to use the C3 and C5 for the little sign. It says, have a great day. Again, the stamp did not come with that in there. I added the wording in there. Here's the C5 and then I'll blend that back out with the C3. Super fun. I, I printed this out much larger and colored it as well. Here I'm using Y11, YG13, and YG17. The Y11 is just for the center of the flower, and then the two green is gonna be for the stem and the leaves, giving them just a little bit of some contrast. I'm gonna add a little bit darker right at the base of the stem and the leaves. So like I had mentioned, I colored a larger image of this and then decided I wanted to make it into a slider card. So I sized down my image quite a bit. I'm using RV25 and RV29 for the petals. I'm going to give it a base coat with the RV25 and then just add a little bit of shadow with the RV29. I am coloring on Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound. And I printed this out on my inkjet printer. I have no problem with the ink running with my Copics. And here's where I introduce that Micron 01 pen. And go back in, I'll give you a closer look here. Go back in and just go back over some of the lines that were drawn in by the illustrator and then adding a few of my own. I am darkening his eyes and his eyebrows. Like I said, I lost some of that detail when I blended out the markers, being that the image was so faint to begin with. So I'm just going back and adding it back in, giving this guy a little bit more character again. Adding back in the definition between his paws. And there's a little bit closer look. For the card itself, I'm using a template from Lori Whitlock. I'll be sure to link that down in the description box. I purchased mine from the online Silhouette store. She also sells it on her website as well. So I will link it, link you to both of them. And I also printed out the exact same image on transparency. This I printed from a laser printer. It, the ink ran because of the transparency I was using. It ran with my inkjet printer. So it's the exact same image just printed from a laser printer onto some transparency. And this paper I'm using is from Pebbles, I believe. I'm creasing it right there in the middle, giving it a good crease with my bone folder. And here's the template that came together. It's these are two pieces of a track that you want to glue together. So I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry and I'm going to adhere those together. Those are going to give it a little bit of lift, a little bit of, um, you could use thin foam tape as well. It's just going to give it a little space in your card so your slider card can pull in and out of the card easily. 
So now I'm going to add some double-sided tape right around that little bit of a window. That's what's going to hold our transparency down. I'm making sure to burnish that again with my bone folder. And now I'm going to add the image down straight down to my card. I'm using some Beacon Fabri-Tac. And if you notice, Lori Whitlock's template is quite a bit smaller. I enlarged mine. I wanted a much larger card. So I just enlarged it in my Silhouette Cameo. Now I'm going to glue that track down. You don't want to glue it to the top, just the left side, the right side and the bottom. And there should be a little bit of gap right at the top so your card folds easily. And again, this is going to give it a little bit of a spacer to move that pull tab in and out. So go ahead and remove your tape backing. You want to line your image up perfectly on top of each other and glue that down. My laser printer, it prints out almost hot, so it did kind of give a little um, wave to my transparency. I've since learned that if I run it through my laminator, it kind of straightens it back out. So there's a little tip. If you're going to do that, maybe run it through a laminator or your Sizzix Big Shot machine to flatten it out a little. Mine was a little bit wavy, but it still looked super cute. So now I added glue to that track, glued down the front of my card. And here's a decorative piece that also comes with the template. And you can leave it just like this and it looks super cute. I decided I wanted to decorate it. Really fun to play with. I found myself just looking at it over and over. Super cute. Lori Whitlock's um, template also comes with pre uh, designs that go on the inside. So there's tons to choose from. You don't have to stamp your own and color your own. She does it all for you if you would prefer that. So I'm using some flowers from cardstock that I had in my stash from Knitwit Collections, the Abigail collection and they are doubled so they're stable and now I'm just adding some trim to go around that border piece using Fabri-Tac, Beacon Fabri-Tac. I love because it adheres pretty quickly but it also gives you a minute to move it around if you need to. The flat back pearl trim is from Wild Orchid Crafts and again I'm going around the entire border of that. And here I'm showing you one more time what it looks like sliding it in and out. And I decided to add a little resin bow that I had. I'm using some Ranger Multi Matte Media and adding that on. And that's my entire card. I hope you enjoyed today's process. Please check out the description box for more information. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day today.